Hey everyone, my name is Michael and today I want to have a look at pagination in GraphQL. Traditionally in GraphQL we're using cursor-based pagination as established by Facebook. It's one of the, the three major relay specifications that have become best practice in GraphQL to use. But there are cases where you're forced by the UI to use something like offset pagination, or so most people think. So what I'm gonna do today is show you how we can use cursor-based pagination in cases where we are not using infinite scrolling and are tackling more traditional UI designs with like these paging strips at the bottom. For all of this, we are using Hot Chocolate 15.1 and Green Donut 15.1. Before we get started, if you want the source code of this episode or any other episodes that we have on YouTube, head over to tv.chillycream.com. If you like our content, please hit the like and subscribe button below the video. And with that, let's dive in. So I have here already the GitHub page open. And why GitHub? Because GitHub is using GraphQL. And GitHub actually uses very traditional paging concepts. So up here we have a search bar and there we can search for anything on GitHub. So let me wipe this out and let's actually look for GraphQL. And if we do that, we get here a list of the search results. So let's take that a bit apart. So up here we have kind of the categories that we found things in. And we have here aggregation. So we see there are 8 million hits for things around code, or there are 213,000 hits around repositories. We also can see here our search results, and you can see here highlighted the term GraphQL. That's basically the match we have on this item. If we scroll down, you can see here the traditional search bar where we can jump to a specific page. For instance, I can jump to page three. So this is really a traditional pagination concept in our UI. But how can we tackle this with cursor-based pagination? So I've said GitHub is actually using GraphQL and we actually can have a look at the GraphQL API. So I'm going here to Nitro and I already have here the GitHub API pinned, so I can just open it. And then we can have a look at the schema of GitHub. So this is only the public available part of GitHub schema, but still we can have a look. So we go here into query, and then let's have a look for search. So this is a search field in their schema. So what you can see is that we are returning here a search result item connection. In cursor-based pagination, we call the results types a connection because it represents a connection between two nodes, right? Uh, between a parent node and that child nodes. In this case, we are at root level field here. So this is the connection from the query type to its child nodes, the search items. On these connections, we can have metadata. One of the standardized metadata is for instance, the paging info, which tells us that there's a next cursor, so an end cursor, there is a start cursor, if we have a next page or a previous page, basically for us to navigate. But we also have here the aggregations, and that's really the place to put aggregations, like the code count. This is what I showed here, right? These numbers come from these aggregations. And next here we have the edges. The edges really gives us the metadata to a specific item that we are pointing to. Uh, in this case, you can see the metadata is here text matches. And that is actually what I pointed out, what is highlighted here. These are our text matches here. And this is really nice from a user standpoint to use because you have all these things that we need for this API to build here, for this UI to build here, just in one API on a GraphQL backend. But how does the paging bar play into this? Because as far as we can see in this schema here, in this public available schema, we can only navigate to the end cursor of our page, basically use this infinite stream that we can navigate on. And that really translates well into an infinite scrolling concept in your UI. What I'm gonna show you today is how we can use cursor-based pagination to create a concept like GitHub has there, with this traditional paging bar where we can jump to specific pages. What's important to note actually is, that we cannot just jump to any page. There's always just a set 
of possible page jumps here. So let's have a look at some code and let's explore how we can build this thing in hot chocolate. So I'm going here to my prepared project. And at the moment, this is a traditional setup here where we have our service layer and our service layer uses Green Donut Data 15. So if you go to the brand service here, you can see that we have this method here to get the brands and then we get a brands page. We pass in here the paging arguments. So we could, for instance, say, give me the first five items. These are traditional key set paging or cursor based paging arguments here. So I can pass a cursor in and can say, give me the next five items after this cursor, or I can just say, give me the next five items. Let's actually have a quick look at how this works. And I have my API running here. We can have a look at the schema. If I dive into the query type, you can see brands. So this field, if I invoke it, will trigger the service function that I showed you in my brand service. And we can fetch here a brands connection with uh, the traditional cursor-based pagination API that we have in GraphQL. The paging type here looks the same like in the GitHub API, just that I don't have all these aggregations here. I just have total count in this case. So I can dive into the brands here and for instance, get the first two items. And then we take notes here to get a flattened list. And then we can run this thing and we get the first two items. So if I wanna navigate forward, very easy, we use the paging info here, and then we take this cursor and we feed it into the brands field up here and say we want the first two items after this cursor, and then it moves forward. So this is traditional cursor-based pagination API. So how can we use this construct to actually fulfill the interface concept that we have here? So let's dive into how we actually can do that. So here we are back into our service class where we have this get brands method to fetch the brands in a paginated form. So we're gonna go to our queries type here where we are using this service. So traditionally in Hot Chocolate, you signal with the use paging attribute that you wanna use pagination. And this attribute here is a middleware configuration combined with a type configuration. That means it will look at the return type here and configure your field to fulfill our connection type structure. So it will make sure that there's always a connection in a specific structure. Secondly, it also creates a middleware around that, that inspects, so if you return a queryable, it applies the paging algorithms and whatnot. So for Hot Chocolate 15.1, we introduce a new concept where you don't need this attribute. And this is because you're taking over what a connection can do by yourself. So the first thing is that we introduced here a body and we not take this to connection anymore because we are opting into a custom connection. So what I do here is just use our page and we already have for convenience purposes a base class that you can use. It's not just a base class, so it's not abstract. We can just use it here and that is called a page connection. And this page connection will take this page in and make it into a connection. Can just return it here and then pass into it the page. And with that, actually our thing would already work, right? This field would already work. It's now a connection. We have full control. We could inherit from it and change it if we want to. The reason why we do that is actually to opt into a new feature that we have in Hot Chocolate, which is called relative cursors. And to opt into relative cursors, we have to override the options for paging because this is an opt-in. We're not using the paging attribute for it, but a new attribute called use connection. And this is really limited to overriding paging options for this connection. So I can do that here by saying, I wanna enable relative cursors. You can do that also centrally, like if I go here to the program CS and go here to my central GraphQL configuration, I could also say, I wanna override that for all connections that are possible to do relative cursors, right? So in this case, I would say modify paging options. And then we would say, we want to enable relative cursors here. So we are not doing that. I'm just showing you, you could do it here. So let's go back to our brand queries here. Here we opted now into enable relative cursors. We have the new page connection here. 
and then we can just simply start this thing. So while this is starting, let's actually talk about what relative cursors are. So this is a traditional cursor, right? This base64 encoded thing. And if we looked into it, we would see that the cursor has things that we have encoded in our order logic. This is typical for key set pagination and uh, allows us to really jump right into a thing. And that's also the problem if we talk about offset pagination, right? With offset pagination, we have this random access to certain pages that we want to have. And this works through a thing that we have in SQL, which is an offset and a limit. Depending on your SQL variant, this uh, has slightly different terms, but it's all doing the same. That means every page we navigate is actually more expensive. And that's why cursor-based pagination is so good, because in cursor-based pagination, we're actually using our order here to jump just right to the thing that we left off. So the end cursor basically encodes a pointer to the thing where we left off. And then we basically say the next page must be larger than the thing we left off from, right? And this is doing a seek on the database, which is super fast. And that means each page has the same cost as the page before. On top of that, cursor-based pagination doesn't suffer the consistency issues that you have with offset pagination because we are always navigating relative to our entities. So when we talk about this cursor, we have basically here pinpointed that to the name of our entity. So our brand is called BNI in this case, and we have the ID of this brand. So when we talk about relative cursors, it's combining these two concepts, offset pagination and cursor-based pagination. We basically allow to use a normal cursor here from which we navigate relative, plus we are taking a jump on top of that. For instance, we say here, we want to navigate after this cursor, but we want to put an offset of one on top of that. And that still gives us the predictable cost of cursor-based pagination with a small jump on the top of it. And this really works with large data sets as we are never jumping like a million items ahead. It would be more like maybe 300 items ahead Right. depending on how large your page sizes are. So with this, let's actually go back into Nitro and let's have a look at how this translates into our schema. And then you can see we have here the brand connection and we have a relative page info here. So I actually renamed the original page info here to relative page info, which I did here. So we don't have a collision between our two paging concepts. At the moment, we have the old paging concept, which we're using here for the products, for instance, with used paging. This is a page info, but I'm also having for the page connection a page info that brings in the relative cursors. But you can rename that here to introduce a new one and uh, be able to use them side by side. So if you're already using pagination and you want to now introduce the new concept around the relative cursors to your schema, then you can do that without breaking your clients. Okay, so I introduced this here, which uh, has now a brand connection here. And you can see here the new page info that we have for this. And the new page info has two new fields here, which is backwards cursors and forwards cursors. And let me actually have a look at that. So we're gonna fetch here the backwards cursors and the forwards cursors. And you can see actually that are not just strings, they are page cursors. So we have an information about on which page we will jump and uh, the cursor to get to this page. The same we have for the backwards cursor, so a page and the cursor. We can run that. And then you can see we don't get anything here. And that's because we are using here a non-relative cursor. If I delete that and then rerun it, then suddenly we get a lot of forward cursors. These are cursors we can go forward with, right? So if we navigate forwards, whereas we have backwards cursors, which lets us jump backwards. So let's actually put them like this, just so we see better how this fills up, right? So let's rerun that. I have an empty array here. And now I can grab any of these guys. So I'm jumping directly to page three here. So I say, give me the next two things after this cursor. Then I can run this and you can see now I have two backwards cursors here. 
I can jump backwards to page two and to page one. I could also go further to page five. Let's do that. On page five, now I can jump back to four pages here. One, two, three, four. So this allows me to build up this traditional paging use case, right? So let's actually jump back to page two. So how do we jump back to page two? So backwards navigation works in the way that we say last and before. And then we fill this guy in and run this. And then you can see I have one page to jump backwards, but I have now four pages to jump forward to. Okay, this is awesome. But how do we define actually how many cursors I get? And this is on our connection type. So if I go here, I can actually pass in how many cursors I want. You can see max relative cursor count. And I could ask for 10. 20, whatever the amount is you want to have down here. The great thing also is you can inherit from our page connection and then put on your own stuff like these aggregations here. You're totally free on what kind of properties you put on there or how you want to reshape this type. So what do you think about the new relative cursors we have introduced with Hot Chocolate 15.1? Please sound out in the comments if this solves your offset pagination use cases really with the GraphQL best practices on board. And with this, I see you next time.